the first uh, rescue team uh, led by Luke with uh, Fred Davies and uh, other strong um, experienced Smelton's cavers. Uh, or David Willis was, I believe, the official, I remember the official leader, uh, had gone in about seven o'clock. By 10 o'clock, uh, it was still, they still reckoned the waterfall was too high, impossible, and they were in need of relief. Uh, I borrowed kit from some others, David Causer and I, carrying uh, uh, food supplies for those below, headed out across, back across the fields to Swildens uh, to be a second rescue party. We picked up the field telephone from uh, uh, the telephone party um, that was waiting patiently in the old grotto by the water rift and headed down to relieve the party at the waterfall itself. The, I remember that the two under passages, the upper under and middle under, were open, although flooded. They were not as badly flooded as they were when poor Wallington was uh, lost his life in the January 59 event. Uh, so it, things were getting better, but it was still pretty nasty. It still looked pretty nasty. Fred Davies was heading out. He had been on the first party. But when he met us, uh, he said he reckoned it was now feasible to use the Mendip Rescue Organization pulley system from S Suicide's Leap to swing out on a, a rope in a bosun's chair and be dropped straight down uh, through the waterfall. So uh, he led uh, with me second and Dave Quarter third in sequence. The Fred, it was a very brave lead, lead and I want to mention this because it's, I'm now talking to you in October 2020. Fred, who was nearly two years older than me, and I'm in my 86th year now, uh, uh, died in June of this year. That He was a, a very fine caver, uh, loved by all, and that, I must say, was a, a courageous lead. He was hit by a, a tremendous shower of spray. He went into it. But... <laughs> A few moments later, the, the lowering team got a signal jerk and they pulled the rope back up. Obviously, Fred had gone off. He still had his wits about him. He hadn't been pounded to the ground by the water. And uh, I got into the bosun's chair harness and followed him down. Whoop! <laughs> I, I hit the bottom very rapidly in the days, you know, half drowned by the water coming down, but uh, a hand reached out and grabbed me the second time that day. Howard Kenny had hauled me from above at the entrance, and now Fred pulled me out of the waterfall at the bottom of the 40. Uh, very shortly afterwards, David Corser came down, uh, bringing the telephone line down with him. Uh, uh, we moved downstream to set up a, a base. Uh, out of, around the corner, out of the reach of the water, though still within sound of its roaring, we met some of those, the freshest and ablest of those who'd been trapped below. Uh, they made it up the 20, but found the 40, which still had a ladder on it, obviously quite clearly impassable. Uh, David Causer uh, set to work to uh, were dishing out food and to set up a, um, a stove to boil some water for hot drinks for everybody uh, and uh, general food supplies. Fred and I headed on down to look for the other parties, the uh, 
eight or nine people, including two or three beginners, uh, including the two poorly dressed schoolboys. You've heard that they had been swept off at the double pots. Uh, one of them had sat alone for a couple of hours until uh, people from below had come up and left him below the 20. We went on down and uh, collected all of the uh, stranded folk below the 20 foot waterfall, which was laddered, and brought them uh, safely back up to the top of the ladders. Uh, the schoolboys uh, perked up with uh, as they got moving again, and um, we got them up to the base of the waterfall and to hot drinks. Um, uh, the men, the Wells Fire Brigade had been able to get their truck up the very wet fields to within reach of the entrance of the cave and they started furiously pumping sometime in the small hours and sometime between 2.30 and uh, uh, 3.30 the water began to reduce considerably and we were able to, uh, the rescue party at the top was able to lifeline everybody up the ladder safely in the conventional manner. Uh, Fred and I, I think, were the last up the ladder and we were out of the cave by about 4 a.m. And so I wrote in my article to uh, the Wessex Cave Club, it was published the following winter. Um, <laughs> I was in bed and asleep in the Hillgrove hut by 5 in the morning and headed back to Bath to see the family eminently relieved after a few hours sleep. Uh, I've always been frightened when in caves I'm in water passages and I see situations that I know from my experience in Swildens and a couple of other places in West Virginia and certainly in Castle Guard, the cave that you know well, and that floods rapidly in summer, I've always been very frightened, very leery of rapidly floodable passages. We're looking at a couple of hundred feet of obstructed passage with crawling or hands and knees crawling or flat out crawling obstructions that became impossible within a space of five minutes with a terrifying waterfall at the downstream end and uh, impossible in between. So be wary folks. Uh, Although equipment is much better now, electric lamps, uh, the gear is incomparably superior to that which uh, schoolboys and undergraduates or even PhD students could afford in the 1950s and the early 60s, and indeed was available, of course. Uh, still, nature has not changed. The of storms, even on the Mendip, has probably increased, and the rapidity with which flooding may occur will have increased as a consequence of global warming.